This is Entrepreneurs Get Visible, the podcast for people who want more impact, influence, and income. I'm Anna Parker Naples, and I'll be sharing with you proven methods from leading entrepreneurs that help you get visible as an authority in your field. Because anything's possible when you get visible. I wanted to title this episode, How to Have More Fun in Your Business, but I'm going to put a little caveat on that, which is how to have more fun in your life. Because I believe that when you prioritize having fun in your life, actually everything becomes a lot easier. Now, many of you who've been following my journey over the last year or so will know I had a really dodgy 2021. I think lots of us did. But it made me stop and reevaluate what's going on in my life that I love, what's going on in my life that I don't like, what's going happening in my business that I want to ditch, what's happening in my business that bores me to tears, what's going on that I'm not very good at doing. And it made me get super clear on how I want my day-to-day life to feel, whether that is a day where I'm not working or one where I am fully present in the business. So I want to challenge you in this episode to think about how you can have more fun. And for me, what this has meant is being super clear on what actually energizes and lights me up in the business anyway, what lights me up in my life. And for me, actually, that was a lot about creativity. So not only have I decided to have a major focus outside of business for the first time in a few years, where I'm going to be going and doing something super creative that I'm really excited about. I applied for a very prestigious creative writing course with a literary agent that is going to allow me to have much more creativity, to bounce ideas off other writers and have something outside of my business that I'm super passionate about as well. Because what I'd found is that I love my work. I love what I'm doing. I love learning about the online space. But over time, and particularly, I think, as a result of lockdown, what happened for me is that a lot of my world had become my work, had become my business. And whilst on the one hand, I I do believe that you should love what you do and it shouldn't feel like work, it can't be everything. And... I was getting to the point where my children now don't need me in quite the same way. They are teenagers and we have one tween left and they just don't need my attention so much. They're off socializing in the evening or they're in their rooms on games or socializing or texting or whatever it is they do these days. And so suddenly I found that I didn't really know what to do with myself in the evenings. Now that might make me sound like a total saddo, but some of you out there, that might make sense to you. Maybe you're in that situation too. And if you are, then I'd love to hear a bit about that. And what can you do to change how you feel in that, that situation? So I decided that I no longer wanted to be satisfied with just kind of having this, my personal life and home life and responsibilities and family life, and then my business. It wasn't enough for me anymore. And what this has meant is that I've really started thinking about what brings me fun, what brings me joy. And some of this is related to some mindfulness, I suppose, about actually, let's not build businesses so we can have fun in the future. How can we do it right now? So this for me is obviously about creativity, but it's also made me drill down into what bits of the business do I absolutely love doing? What don't I like doing? What do I feel is really boring that I am still doing, even though I could have outsourced it? And what's stopping me from outsourcing those parts of my business? Why aren't I delegating those parts of my business? And what are the excuses that I'm telling myself about that? It also got me to look at well, if I didn't have to do those things that I don't enjoy, what would I really be able to spend my time on in the business? And very often as a business owner, as a creator, particularly someone who I started started what I was doing very much as a solopreneur on my own. And now I have multiple people in the team, not just in the UK, but worldwide. And they do an amazing job for me. But I still, there's part of me that still clings and claws onto having full control truthfully, if you don't enjoy something in your business, if it doesn't light you up in some way, you're not doing it to the best degree anyway. So one of the things I decided was, well, actually, I know that I can really grow the business through Instagram. And once I got over that block about, oh my goodness, having another outlet, 
I've actually made it a consistent thing in the business then. Well, since since January, since I came back to work, as it were, after nearly three months off. And I decided that if I was going to do Instagram Reels or TikTok, which will be coming shortly as well, now that I've got a bit more used to this video style, is that if I was going to do it, I didn't want it to feel like a chore. So I've gone about it thinking, well, how can I have fun on those reels? How can I feel a bit mischievous or mischievous? I never know how to say that word when I'm creating those reels. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, go and check them out. But if you do, I'd love I'd love a bit of support over on there. And I'm just really throwing myself into having fun with them. It also means that it's made me look at other things in the business that I'm doing myself. And my my one of my assistants had been on at me for ages. Anna, write down everything you do, every little thing that you do and think about how either I or someone else in the team or how we could potentially outsource to somebody else. Now, those of you who think, well, that's fine for you, Anna, because you have a team. The reason I have a team now is because I outsourced way before I felt like I could afford it. And you could probably find several different episodes on Entrepreneurs Get Visible that are all about how I got started with some Filipino VAs to start with when I really, it really was a stretch for me. But because I got really focused on them doing tasks that one, I didn't want to do, but two, were income generating, then they paid for themselves for a three month period within just the first 10 days or so. So why wouldn't you do that? The other thing I thought about was, well, I really like time off. And as a busy mum, and a lot of my evenings and weekends are taken up with taking people, smaller, but I would say smaller people, but actually they're all nearly the same size, if not taller than me now, taking them to football, theatre, all of their activities, taking them to meet their friends and really prioritising that after them not being able to socialise in quite the same way for a period during COVID. That's my priority. So when I'm thinking about, well, if I want time off for myself, and what what does that look like? What do I want to be able to do with that time? And I've spoken quite a lot on this podcast about the fact that in 2021, I took off every Friday. And that was such a game changer for me because it actually made me be much more focused on the days that I did work. So this is one thing I would encourage you to do. If you're going to have some time off in your business, it will always mean you come back fresher, more energized, more committed to getting results on the days that you do work. And those days are for you that, you know, I do use them. Sometimes I I think I've got to just do the hoovering. The house is a mess and I'll crack on and get on some with some housework. But most of the time, it's that I can have a lunch or I can go to the spa or I go for a really, really long dog walk, which instead of it feeling like a duty, feels like a pleasurable experience. I think there's something slightly different there. All you dog owners know what I'm talking about. So if you're going to have that time off, then think about, well, how do I really want to spend it? And for me, connection is really important. So For me, that was about, well, how can I make sure every week I'm using time to meet up with somebody else in person or we're scheduling a really great phone call so that those times are bringing me joy and fun back into my life. And laughter and fun has been a really important couple of words for me to think about for this year. The other thing is I really like meeting new people and being part of a a small pod of people, if you like, an engaged group. So for me, it was looking at, well, what networks am I in? What masterminds could I be in? Which ones am I in that maybe don't serve me so much? So I've got to be mindful that maybe I'm not going to be in them much longer. But the ones that I do like, really drilling down into making sure I capitalize on those environments to develop and deepen those relationships with people, which again, might come down to a really great conversation on the, have a call, a Zoom call, a a podcast interview, arrange to meet them for lunch and making that an important component of the days that I do work, because that's what lights me up. So I'd love you to think about this. Where can you have more joy and more fun in your life? Where can you have more joy and more fun in your business? I bet there's a million things, maybe not a million. I bet there's a list of at least 20 things that you know you're not very good at in your business that you dread doing, that you put off. Well, the sooner you outsource that to somebody else who does love it, who can do it in a fraction of the time, you are then able to have a very different energy about the tasks that you do do. And you will become as that front person for your business. 
which if you're listening to this show, that's what you're doing. You are the front person. You know you've got to get visible. You're able to do much more of those activities, which can only lead to good things. So I hope that this has given you some insights. And if you haven't yet, I'm just going to mention the new sister show to this, Podcasting for Entrepreneurs, which is my brand new show that we launched just a few weeks ago and it reached number one in marketing. It's still doing incredibly well all around the world. We got to number 12 in business in the UK. It was kind of cool, very cool. And I'd love you to go and support that as well. It's very niche, but it's going to get really into the nitty gritty of podcasting if you are an entrepreneur and how to use that to increase your profit and your visibility because that's a very key message for me. So if you've not got to have a listen, go check that out. But I hope that this episode has given you some inspiration for how you can make some minor changes to make your life and your business a little bit more fun. And in the meantime, go check out me on Instagram. I've just been dancing in my kitchen today and I'm not a good dancer. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneurs Get Visible. To get your free checklist on how to raise your profile and to find out about our community, go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash get visible.